Well, it's great to welcome you to another episode of Marking the Times, uh, this uh, weekly video blog that we have where we answer questions you send in, talk about things that are happening in our world today that are relevant to Bible prophecy. But again, you can also send in questions not related to Bible prophecy on our Facebook page, and we'll try to get to some of those questions as long as we're able to do that. Uh, one question I want to answer that was sent in, this is a really, really good question, a fascinating question, one that uh, you may not have thought about before, but uh, as we get into a little bit of scripture, you'll see where this comes from. Uh, this person uh, writes that uh, they, they read the, the book that I've written called The End and uh, said some nice things about the book, but then it says that uh, I have several questions that I, I couldn't find the answer anywhere. One that wasn't addressed, and I wondered if you could address um, is we know that Satan tries to imitate God. Um, it's been said by some that he'll possibly try to copy the virgin birth by actually fathering the Antichrist with a human woman who is a virgin, or maybe the opposite. You know, some would say she's a, you know, a, a wicked or an evil woman. Um, and he says in Genesis 3, it does say that God will put enmity between thy seed or Satan's seed and her seed or the woman's seed. Seems like Antichrist is not just empowered or possessed by Satan, but is his actual seed. Just wondered what your thoughts are. Now, it's a good question that, that people have really asked uh, for a long time. It goes all the way back to early church history. Um, I'm going to uh, refer to a book I've written called 101 Answers to Questions About Satan, Demons, and Spiritual Warfare. Um, in that book, I answer this question. Uh, the question is, will the Antichrist be Satan incarnate? And really what this comes from somewhat is, obviously, uh, Satan or the, the Antichrist is going to be a parody of Christ. He's called Antichrist. He's in place of Christ, but he's also against Christ. But we, we know that uh, the Antichrist will have a, a, a death and a resurrection in Revelation chapter 13. We know that he's going to do signs and miracles and wonders. We know that he's going to have a kingdom that lasts three and a half years where he rules the world as kind of a, 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 his counterfeit of Christ's 1,000 year kingdom when he rules the world. So he's going to be this parody or this counterfeit of Christ in many ways. But then that leads people to say, well, will it go so far that he'll actually uh, be the, the son of Satan and a woman. So instead of being like Jesus, being a God man, he'd actually be a devil man or a Satan man. Um, this view actually goes back early in church history. Um, St. Jerome, um, in the early church, um, he believed that it is the counterfeit uh, son of Satan, uh, that he would have a supernatural origin, that he would literally be Satan's son, the Antichrist. Um, Hollywood has latched onto this idea. Um, you have uh, the movie Rosemary's Baby. Some of you may have seen that a long time ago. I think the original one came out in 1968, the Omen series that came out in the late 70s. In um, and, and both of those uh, Hollywood movies, the Antichrist is pictured as the, the direct son of Satan. Now, biblical support for this is drawn from Genesis 3.15, where the Lord cursed the serpent after um, he led a Adam and Eve to sin and said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, as is between the serpent and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. So that this, this statement of your offspring and her offspring. Now, I believe that her offspring there, the, the offspring of the woman, is Jesus. It's not just humanity because uh, seed there is singular and it's also the masculine is used. He will bruise you on the head. So whoever this one who's coming is a singular, he's a person who's going to bruise uh, Satan uh, or crush his uh, head. So I think the seed of the woman here clearly is this coming Redeemer or Messiah. So we have Christmas all the way back here in the Garden of Eden. But then that raises the question when it says Satan's seed, will Satan's seed also be um, an individual as well? Or could it just be, you know, Satan's seed being kind of fallen humanity? Um, let me just say this. I think the supernatural origin of the Antichrist is certainly possible uh, from this scripture and others. And again, St. Jerome and others have held that. But it seems better to me to see uh, the Antichrist as a, a man, fully man, but someone who is possessed by Satan. In fact, very early on in church history as well, or, or a little bit later, in AD 950, a man named Adso wrote a book called Letters on the Origin and the Time of the Antichrist. Which, by the way, that just tells us a lot of people were thinking a lot about the Antichrist in the early church. 
and he held that the Antichrist Christ would be born of a virgin. He'd be born from the union of a father and mother, but that he would be um, possessed by Satan from the very instant of his conception, and that he'd be, be fostered by the power of the devil and protected in his mother's womb. Now, again, whether that's true or not, uh, we have no idea, way of knowing, but that was Adso's view about, on, on this. But again, my view is, and, uh, and, and the, the view that the Antichrist is Satan's literal son, that he's Satan incarnate, is not, is not uh, demanded from Scripture, but it's not prohibited either. But in, in passages like in 2 Thessalonians 2, it calls him the man of sin or the man of lawlessness. He seems to be a man. Also in 2 Thessalonians 2.9, it says his coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders. So it seems like he's a man who has to be energized by Satan in order to do the evil deeds that he does. Also, Revelation 13.4 says the dragon gives his power to the beast or the Antichrist. So I think it teaches there that the Antichrist is able to do what he does, not because he's Satan's offspring, but because uh, Satan energizes and empowers him as kind of his chosen instrument to rule the world. So again, the idea that, you know, that uh, the Antichrist is the, the seed, the direct seed, or Satan incarnate certainly is possible, but I think it's better to see him as just a man who is fully uh, controlled and possessed uh, by Satan to be able to do the things that he does. But whatever view one takes on that, this kind of is a follow-up from last week, the world certainly is set up for the coming of the Antichrist. Again, I mentioned those words last week, this authoritarian impulse that we're seeing in our world today, uh, leaders grabbing more and more control. We can see how things are being set up uh, for people to, uh, to follow a leader like this for him to seize world control. Well, thank you uh, for joining us again. I appreciate you being with us. Uh, well, I pray God's richest blessing upon you until we see you next time.